How's it going, folks? Welcome to another Booze and Chill podcast. Today, we are talking cocktails. We're going to be hanging out with my good buddy, Angelo Lira. Uh, he's been in the channel before. We're going to be talking about uh, what he's been up to, really. And uh, as you can see, I got inspired to do cocktails. It's not the most professional looking cocktail. In fact, it's I'm, I'm just substituting stuff. So, Angelo, if you're watching, please don't judge me. Yeah, we're going to be uh, catching up, see what he's been up to, and what uh, some insights. He's been giving us some insights on some uh, what he does. B being a mixologist, what it takes, uh, the art, what artistic ways to go about it, and uh, stuff like that. We're going to be really learning how to be, make cocktails, how to be a mixologist. So stay tuned for that, guys, and uh, really get your cocktail on for this one. Maybe we just add just a little bit. Here you go, guys. Today's podcast, being a mixologist, basically. Cheers. How's it going, folks? Welcome to another episode of Booze and Chill Buzzcast Podcast. Today, we're talking to my good friend who has been here in the channel before. First time in the podcast, Angelo Lira. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, where he's, what he's been up to and what it is uh, that he's doing, where he's moved, because he's moved away. And I, I, miss, I miss the bastard. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and start with that, that logo, shall we? Before we get started... I have to go ahead and let this dude in. Again, this is Angelo Michael Lira. Let me introduce him in here, guys. Boom. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Whoop. What's going on? There we go. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? My name is Angelo Lira. Um, mixologist, bartender, whatever you like to call me. I like making drinks. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been bartending now 11 years. I've known Raymond for a while, and he loves coming to the bar i work at right now though he doesn't know where i'm at no no all right so he's i'm still in laredo away. dude actually you and what? the bar yeah i'm still in laredo still laredo yeah laredo has a oh. speakeasy now and it is amazing huh. so um i work at a place called gatsby's it is an amazing bar what we do is um a speakeasy concept with amazing cocktails We've been uh, pushing out a lot of uh, variations and twists on classic cocktails. And my dog loves being the center of attention. <laughs> cool? um, and then, yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. So I've been doing nights there Tuesday through Saturday. And then Tuesday through Friday, I'm at Rocha, Rocha's in the morning. Since oh, okay. uh, basically uh, the owners, Ray, Sam, Broly, you guys are amazing, by the way. I love you guys. You guys are amazing bosses. Amazing guys. Kicker YouTube amazing manager alex amazing manager um shout so out, those guys out. basically go from they own rochas and then where gatsby's is now which is where um the old rooftop used to be I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> all right um so it's where the old rooftop used to be and basically what they're doing is the bottom floor is gatsby's and a speakeasy the top floor is going to be a type of miami day club type thing you know good vibes a little bit for the you know rowdier crowd and stuff like that it's gonna be pretty awesome and then we have the brochas so all three are being in the little same placita area but each of them have like a different vibe to them that you can you know either uh you know i feel like dressing up being a little more business casual okay i'm gonna go to gatsby's or you know what i feel like you know Dan uh, jamming out and dancing and then just having a good time okay i'm gonna go to rise which is gonna be upstairs from gatsby's now it's awesome and then it, oh i want to have a good meal rush us hmm that's weird because the last we spoke you were like oh i i'm moving because you got offered some job and but you never said where so i was like oh man there goes yeah there goes angela um, man i had actually got for two jobs at that point so it was either stay in town and uh do your this which i'm doing now which i love or okay. um go out of town to san antonio and start a bar program for my old boss's new restaurant in a way mm -hmm. okay um i wasn't ready to undertake a move right now okay so it's too much it's too much yeah yeah <laughs> especially like um i love laredo man honestly i i love laredo and i love 
the cocktail scene and what it's becoming right now. And like, um, I work with this girl named Isis. She's 22 years old, dude. And she's literally can run circles around me, man. I swear to God, you got to come check out the bar. Like the bartenders I'm working with are on it, like another level. And I'm learning so much just from watching them. And it's, it's, it's so awesome, dude. Like, honestly, like, um, she she's literally handles the service well. She's so she's busting out tickets just for like the servers and everything like that. But each one of her oh. cocktails is just like always looking so like pristine. Like her her garnishes are always on point. She's like, no no no, I'm not putting that out there yet. Let me let me roast a marshmallow on top of it or something like that. And it's like, damn dude. Like, so it's a very precise there then. Yeah, but it kind of sounds like uh, really up your alley because um, I've been around when you see, like when you've done like your stuff. And you, I feel like you're kind of like around there because it's very, um, it's different. It's something that you don't really see in any typical bar, especially yeah. here in Laredo. So yeah. I feel and like, and like I like putting on a show too. So, <laughs> oh, of course, uh, that's kind of like part of uh, mix, being a mixologist. Yeah. There's one thing to make a drink, but there's one thing to make a drink and make it uh, a performance or oh, stunt, yeah. if you will. Awesome, dude. Uh, so I guess uh, I'm going to start throwing you, throwing at you the questions here. All right, let's go. I'm ready. Uh, the first question, um, can you describe the approach to crafting cocktails and how you incorporate creativity into your creations? Like we were just saying that there's a difference between just making a drink and, you know, actually performing. Sure. Um, well, usually when it comes to the point of what you're making the drink for is always what I try to like push myself towards this because I have a very chill way of making like coming up with drinks and stuff like that. Most of the time it's always like, a, uh, let me see what I got. All right. That usually tastes good with that. That tastes that has cinnamon notes that has this. And I'm like, huh, let's try this all together. You know, let's see what, what I come up with. Uh, okay. But if it's for like an event or something like that, like um, I just got booked for, on May 4th for an event. I'm trying to find out the details of like, what is it is it a wedding is it something else should i make something special um but yeah um usually i like to find out little details like um about the event or even like uh, when a person comes up to the bar and is like oh surprise me can you create a cocktail for me or something like that i have so much fun with that um there's this uh, guy named david he is awesome he's uh he's gonna be coming by the bar hopefully tuesday or wednesday he's a He's a very awesome kid, man. Um, he just turned 22. He is a great guy. I love this kid. Um, yeah, uh, he, he, uh, he he has special needs. He is awesome, though. He does not let them stop him. He is the happiest person I've ever met. And, like, um, yeah, dude, he wants to learn how to bartend, dude. Like, <laughs> So you're taking him under your the wing, then? Not that not only that, I just want to teach him how to make a cocktail for his dad too, because he's he always tell like he this kid is so happy about his dad and the people he's with and the, how they like to have a drink and everything like that. And I just you know want to make his day a little bit special just so that way he could be like you know what? I made them that drink, I did that, dude. That's awesome. But yeah, like for that's him, awesome. I, I made him an amazing drink, and it was only because of the fact that like. I saw the joy in him and he told me he likes uh, pineapple juice and all this stuff. So I was like, dude, I'm making you something special. Don't even think about it. I got you. So like inspiration really just hits you like a like a ton of breaks sometimes, especially like when you're happy about it and like you see it's going to bring joy to like someone like like David, dude, like, dude, it just it made me so happy just to see him so happy, man, honestly. That's awesome. See, that's that's another thing, like uh, the creativity, how you mentioned the beginning uh it's an it's it's an art form that's that's a, that's a one way to look at it because like like you said it's just playing around with different stuff different flavors different this and that so it's like it's an art form within itself and then yep. you also get the satisfactory of also making somebody's day like you mentioned like like this guy so not only are you fulfilling something but you're also uh fulfilling them uh I want to say maybe physically because you know the cock when the cocktails hit, you know what I mean. You start yeah. feeling a little bit better about you know your day, so Heck that's yeah, freaking dude. cool. And, and you try <laughs> to play on all their senses too. Like when you're making a cocktail, you want to be able to like, like especially like with my old fashions and stuff like that. Like okay, mm -hmm. it looks good, it tastes good, 
But then, you know, I do that orange citrus, you know, so it, it also smells good. I do a wood burn, you know, stuff like that, you know, play on more senses than just the, you know, your simple stuff, you know. Definitely. Um, let's see. Let's move on to the second question here. Uh, what techniques or methods do you use to ensure consistency and quality in your drinks? So this is something I actually struggle with a bit just because when I do create a cocktail on the fly, I cannot write it down right away. So okay. that's the part that gets me because whenever I come up with something special for someone, I'm like, oh, this is so good. This tastes amazing. I'm so excited about it. But if like I'm in the middle of a rush or something, it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, you know, what? give me two minutes. I just got to write down this recipe real fast. I'm sorry. like. <laughs> that, that's, that, okay. well, and sorry, when inspiration that hits man it hits bro <laughs> <laughs> so like yeah like some certain points i can't write down my recipe which is horrible but i remember it enough to get the gist of it but at the same okay. point to avoid <laughs> to avoid inconsistency you want to write down your recipes guys any of your recipes Definitely. if you make a drink that night for someone at the end of the night be, sit down and be like okay i made this drink for someone it tasted really good they really liked it if they come back into my bar i want to be able to make that same drink for that person in case they ever ask for it like true that, that. Recipe. true that man and there, there's a saying that goes if you got goals or like in your case uh recipes and you're just like no i'm gonna memorize it you're gonna forget about it the no. saying goes Write it down. Don't don't memorize it because it's gonna like, it's gonna it's gonna leave you like that. Exactly. Like classic cocktails, a hundred percent. I don't doubt anybody could remember how to make an old fashioned gimlet, any of those. Hundred percent don't doubt it. Any of your recipes, oh my gosh, you're making one every couple of days or so. You just make sure you write it down. Just make sure. <laughs> yeah. Especially if uh if it's like a it's like a banger, like you make it right on the spot. And not, you get one person to try it, and then they're like, "Oh!" And they start recommending it to the person next to them, and then that person start recommending it to their friend, and it's it just hits the, the entire night. You're you're bang, you're freaking, you're you're making it, you're making it big, you're making tits, blah blah blah, this and that. that come and, they yesterday. come again, they come again, and you're like, "Shit, how did I do that?" <laughs> so, day before yesterday, I think it was a Wednesday. We had these guys come in. They're awesome guys. They work at Five Eleven. They are amazing guys. Uh, Ricky and the guys out there, kneecaps, Momo, fucking <laughs> kneecaps. That's an awesome name. <laughs> FF. I love you guys. Uh, <laughs> they 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 came in, started doing this whole Goodfellas scene and like doing like freaking Italian accents. It was hilarious. Um, but anyways, um, I made them a variation on an aviation. I made it your bad mm. aviation because I use this special liqueur that we make in house that has a U in its name. So I use that in the name, you know, your bad, your, your bad last word, your bad aviation. You know, I'm doing a plane. Okay. That. that makes sense. Yeah. So I made them the aviation on Wednesday. They didn't come in Thursday. They came in Friday though. And we're like, Hey, we want that. Your bad aviation. And I was like, I looked at them for a second. I was like, Oh yeah. I made you guys a drink that day. Damn. <laughs> so I just looked at him for a second. I was like, I'm going to remember what I put in that drink because I like you kneecaps. And he looked at me. He's like, yeah, you will, Jello. Yeah, you will. Come on three times. All right. So there's a story to that. We'll get to that later. Um, but yeah. Got it. Uh, Got it. Yeah, I made him a, a, a Your Bad Aviation, which is basically a, a take on the aviation. But I add the our special in-house liqueur as well as some green chartreuse nice aviation yeah, of the maraschino liqueur aviation is the the ryan reynolds gin is it not yeah right so but there's also a cocktail called aviation oh, okay uh yeah i was gonna i was gonna mention i've i've tried i've not tried i've made the 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 cocktail that he he introduced when that first came out i don't know if you know about that one no i do not what was the he, cocktail they he called it the the vasectomy it's a gnarly ass name. It is, but but, it, but it's so simple though. I don't remember the ingredients, but I've made it, and I think I might have made something with it. 
But uh, I am su- so curious. super nerd name is super simple to make, but it's also very delicious. I I I, I totally like think that you should probably introduce that just because of the name. People will come. All right, you know what? Yeah, it actually <laughs> it's okay. So you're looking it up. <laughs> I found out what's in it. It is so simple, but at the same yeah. time, wow, that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's uh, 1.25, 1.25 of gin, one ounce of cranberry juice, lemon juice, and three ounces of tonic. Not that bad. Honestly, there you go. Very simple drink. Very delightful. I'm I'm pretty sure I'd love that actually. Uh, a little a little bit off topic. Like when it comes to making the drink, like for example, uh-huh. like like this uh this vasectomy, like it could be something super simple, like the the ingredients and how you make it and whatnot, and then you go like crazy with the name. Like, does that affect it in any way? Somewhat, yes, because um it's kind of like saying, like, oh, I have a I have a chihuahua and his name is Killer, you know, kind of situation. Yeah, like, okay, so there's <laughs> been points before I got really good at names for my cocktails and started doing themes for my names and stuff like that that really you know, resonate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Would I just name what was in the cocktail as the cocktail? It did mm. not resonate as good. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, so back when I used to work for El Puesto, there was this drink called the Coconut Butterfly Tea. Okay. It had coconut rum and butterfly tea in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work? Like, it didn't sell? It, it sold. It's just the fact that I know the name didn't, like, really pack the punch. It really should have. Because, like, I mean, I, I listed what was in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you go simple or... I don't want like, to say lazy, but my, like. my newer one um, <laughs> that I'm really proud of that actually won me the. So I won the mixology showcase for the Bethany House of 2023. Yeah. Oh, congrats. Uh, um, so for that, I did a cocktail that was really good. It was very floral with a little bit of rhubarb taste in it as well. So that one, it's called a Don't Play by the Rules. Ooh, I so, like that. Yeah, see, that name actually resonates. It sticks okay. with people. It's like, and then the way I spelled rules is R H U L E S because it was take on mm. rhubarb. Okay. So yeah, um, see that one works a lot, awesome. <laughs> and especially now that I work in a speakeasy, when I tell people, "Oh yeah, I got a drink that's don't play by the rules," they're like, "Oh shit, I want that drink. I need that drink. <laughs> that sounds like a badass drink, dude." Okay. Okay. Because because of the name alone, I mean, and then even with um. Your bad last word, your bad aviation. People are hearing that, seeing the drink that's coming out with it, and they're like, oh shit, dude. Yeah, that drink. Give me. Okay, that makes more sense. So yeah, the name does help. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like this whole this this YouTube thing that I do. The more attractive the title is, the more they want to come and see it. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, exactly. that makes sense. That makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh let's move on to the next one. Uh yeah. How do you update on current cocktails? This one's actually very, uh, I'm curious about this one. How do you update current cocktails, trends, and incorporations, incorporate them, sorry, <clears throat> into into your menu? Lots. Lots. Holy crap. And lots. <laughs> there, there's more, by the way. But trust me, lots of books, lots of studying, lots of looking over stuff. Um. You might think something tastes amazing in your head, mm-hmm. but the good part about having, well, where I work now is having three bartenders. Each of us have a different taste and variations that we love doing that okay. each of us can be like, oh, dude, wait, what if you add this to that? What if, what if you did this instead of that? And like, it is such a nice thing to have because of the fact that like, um it offers a balance in a drink okay you know like something that like the knowledge that i have is very like geared towards classic cocktails and stuff like that as well as like a few (laughs) crazy tricks that i try and stuff like that um (laughs) but like um 
Lobo, my the dude who works in the middle well, uh, okay. has a very mezcal tequila, very like um, Amaro type training, and it is amazing because like he is literally busting out cocktails with like freaking that look amazing and beautiful and just taste like like some stuff that I've never tasted before. And I'm just like, dude, this is, this is amazing. Would, would, would you add to this? Would you, can, can I, can I have that? <laughs> like, That's I know awesome, it's for dude. the customer, but like, I did, please. <laughs> um, and then like, uh, Isis, dude, I swear to God, man, she's running circles around us. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. By the way, if you ever come to Gatsby's Lobo, Isis and me, we're amazing, but trust me, Isis is running circles around both of us. <laughs> <laughs> um she's amazing she makes these amazing cocktails that like she takes through time preparing like literally you can tell the patience and the love she has for making cocktails like with the products she puts forward because it's literally every time she puts something in front of us she's like okay i don't know if you guys are gonna like this can you try it and like all of us are like oh my god this is delicious like We'll have slight notes, but even then, it's like, dude, like, this is delicious. Good job. No notes. Good. Like, fantastic. But yeah, uh, right. staying up to date is just literally listening just to everything that's around you, man. Everything. Uh, from like trend, Trends and yeah, stuff like that. Like okay. little TikTok trends, too. You'll see them and be like, oh, okay, I'm never going to use that. I don't, I don't need that idea. No, dude, trust me. Some of them are just so ridiculous that they freaking awesome to do in front of people. Um, what was the one I was thinking? I, I think it was. I forgot which one. I don't know. I've been tossing a lot of bottles and stuff in front of people, so yeah, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> little, true, little, true. little trends and flips and stuff. You know, catch people. Out. <laughs> Is there like a like a certain like how you say uh, bottle flipping? Is there like trends for that too, as well as as well as the cocktailing? Um. Yes. Uh. There's a few people that I, I follow, Robin Navarro, um, Yvonne uh, from New York and stuff like that, and Tom Dyer as well. These guys are literally like, they spend every day practicing this stuff, whereas I can spend like maybe like two hours doing it before I hurt my, my hand like really bad. <laughs> um, but these guys spend like, oh my God. May gosh, spill man, some dude. tea, bro. <laughs> 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 like um dude I, I swear to god these guys have are tossing like four or five bottles up in the sky at once and like just oh, like landing shit. behind their back and stuff like that and i'm just here like you guys want to see me toss a tin around <laughs> <laughs> i could do That's a tin <laughs> but yeah um no people are enjoying it and then um <laughs> my boss has a fun idea to try something coming soon um he wants me to try some little uh flame bartending you know with the uh, the bottles and stuff like that okay and i was like you know let me let me get a little more comfortable with that <laughs> idea it's, it's a little bit you know i just don't want to die but i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be seeing you spitting fire from your mouth soon is that, is that uh, what's no, gonna happen no, no 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 i'm gonna be <laughs> using a bottle and just basically at the one end of the bottle is gonna be the fire and then i'm just gonna be spitting oh it okay okay like okay that. yeah it, yeah. would be it would be crazy though it would be crazy oh, dude though. i no, i've done that before i i do not like for some <laughs> reason like i like it just it just went down here and it started burning and i was like no 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah, i never wanted understandable. to that. understandable <laughs> understandable awesome um uh, next question yeah. uh can you share an example of a time when you had to handle a difficult customer request or compliment complaint sorry on how you and how you resolved it because i'm pretty sure like again i've seen your stuff i've tasted your stuff like no complaints i enjoyed them all I, you must get one or two that kind of sort of disagree what is it that you do uh there's no real difficult customer or anything like that it's really just the person who doesn't see your perspective in a way so, so like, you never like uh have to like encounter like a karen I, every now and then, yeah, you get you'll get a Karen who's like, "Oh, this this doesn't taste good" or something like that. But even then, you know, I mean, it's like, "Okay, cool." I mean, just literally just knock back and be like, "Okay, cool." 
what kind of cocktail do you like? What's uh, what flavor did you like? Is you, uh, if they were like, if they were the one who were like surprised me and they didn't like the surprise, mm-hmm. just be like, okay, cool. Um, how about this? You tell me what kind of uh liqueur you like and how sweet you like it, so that way this doesn't happen the second time. I can make you something that you like, or like um, <laughs> like yesterday. Uh, there's this guy who um, we ran out of Tito's. And he was asking, "Oh, you ran out like, of what? Tito's uh, vodka." Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I like I told him, "Oh, we're out of Tito's. This kettle one worked." Okay. He didn't hear that, so he was like, "Do you have anything that's similar to Tito's?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, kettle one." No, something similar to Tito's. Yeah, kettle one. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't hear that again. I was like, "Ethel, get over here." Good job. <laughs> Um, so it was it was weird, but at the same time I was cracking up just because the whole time I was just like, God damn it, dude. Like, I'm telling you, we have kettle one. Would you, <laughs> do you like kettle one? Like was, so finally I looked at his buddy, I was like, Hey buddy, I know it's for you. Do you like kettle one? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna make it with kettle one. <laughs> <laughs> and then like his buddy came out to you later. He's like, dude, like, yeah, he, he he's a little drunk. I'm like, Yeah, I know. It's okay. Don't don't worry about it, man. Like, it's it's okay. Like I mean, you encounter drunk people every day. You're not going to, you're not going to be yeah, there. I feel like, like that's like part of the job. Yeah. Like if you start taking it to heart, like every drunk person getting after you or something like that, you're just going to end up with a bad day. Oh, you laugh at it at the end of it. And then you just roll out, roll it off. And you're just like, yeah, the good part is also like, um, there has been points when people do get a little too rude and you got to walk away from the situation for a second. Okay. Amazing thing working with three bartenders. We all see each other's like stuff. So like um I think it was a few days ago a lady actually grabbed me while I was like cuz I am <laughs> uh we have a three well system. I'm at the the main well where basically the customers are able we walk in and everything like that. So the customers can stand there and there's a little opening they can like either go into the bar if they show choose which they should never do or like just stay on that side. A uh, lady actually went into the bar, grabbed me, and I was just like, oh, my God, I was making a drink. I literally just stopped what I was doing, looked down, and I was like, I put down my stuff, and I was like, I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm just going to walk away. So I walked towards the sink to go wash my stuff up. Uh, Lobo went, talked to the lady, was like, okay, how can I help you, man? What do you need? And then uh, Isis was just like, hey, you okay? Everything good? All right. Like, yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So it, it's good to have the three bartenders there at the same time, just because like whenever we see that one of us is having like a bad day or a difficult customer or something like that, the other two in like we intrude in a way, so that way we can be yeah, the yeah. buffer or like yeah, we can be a like, buddy system. Yeah, like yeah. hey dude, you're not on this alone. We got you. Okay, hey dude, what's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah, that that sounds horrible. I got you. Don't worry about that. Get up, get up, go, go. Go, go, go get a snack. Go get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that does work. Having more than one uh, person in the bar, like you said, just to kind of like uh, help each other out. That's really, that's smart. And going back to uh, somebody complaining about your drinks, I mentioned you just kind of like completely switch it out. Yeah. Uh, have there been... Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Have there been times where, like, let's say you give them you give them a uh, the cocktail, and uh, instead of just switching it out, do you just kind of like tweak it? Or um, do you just go yeah, with actually, yeah. There, there's um, there's some good cases of that, especially with like stuff like um, <laughs> most of the people whenever mm-hmm. like nowadays when like they come to Gatsby's and I make them like a good martini or something, they're like, oh, I wanted the bubble. That that's the most caring thing that we get, but even then, it's not that bad. It's just that little remember that bubble machine I have. No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So we have two of them now. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> one is mine, one is Gatsby's. Mine is awesome because I have it right next to me, so I'm using it pretty fast. The other one, the servers take and go do stuff at the tables and stuff like that. But okay. the most uh, the most thing I always get like whenever I make a martini or something that's like the easiest thing to fix okay is literally them just being like oh I, I i wanted a bubble i wanted a bubble on this can you make a bubble on this i'm like oh, no problem just slide the cocktail back give it a spritz 
and then literally just grab the gun and just make a giant bubble on it. That's it. And it's not that <laughs> difficult of a of a cocktail fix. But it is the funniest it's, thing. It's, just it's not so, so much changing. It's not so much changing the recipe. It's just the bubble. Yeah, that's it. That, that's the most <laughs> like that. That that is literally the most caring thing we get. But even then, it's just like it's the most simplest thing to fix. So I'm always like, oh yeah, no problem. Right there, boom, bubble. Got you. I did that. <laughs> like, <laughs> but even, it, it makes it like I got. I got to be honest though. It does make the experience a little bit more, especially since like now a lot of places do have it in the radio i've seen at least like four or five bars now that have it which i'm pretty happy with but like okay. it's still something that not a lot of people have like gotten a chance to order or see in front of them because like places like um oh, what was the one place i know that had it? oh i know that um i think a grill on the loop has it but Lincoln grill is doing that now yeah okay which is pretty cool honestly more power to them at least they're trying something new um, oh yeah that's, that's but cool. like yeah like a lot of people don't go there a lot of people don't go to like gatsby's as well but i mean when they do get to come i mean it'd be good to show them like an experience like that you know true 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 yeah. kind of really uh expanding on the the mixology thing because i feel like uh i mean the the drinking scene here where we're from I feel like it's it's pretty pretty high. Uh, as far as cocktails, I feel like it's kind of like not in not exactly where not maybe maybe where you might want it to be. Yeah, maybe. yeah. In all fairness, I like though, I, I got to be honest though. At Gatsby's, um, as far as beer sales go, it's been our liquor sales, mm -hmm. our wine sales, and then our beer sales. Really yeah dude we've we've actually had more of a resurgence of cocktail drinkers now and like people coming back to drink more cocktails because of the fact that like that's what we push out more like our menu doesn't even show beers so like you Crazy. have to ask like, hey do you have beers like in order to know like if we have beers how is your uh y'all's beers uh, uh choice in there pretty good selection um you know just your imports and uh domestics as well you know i okay. think the best import we have right now is probably our Stella Artois and then our best domestic Does that case count because i swear to god that's domestic to us right <laughs> yeah <that's domestic>. <laughs> <laughs> cuz no, i i, I don't, don't want to say miklo cuz like god damn that's water <laughs> That's piss water. No, I'm it's kidding. just it's water, guys. <laughs> no, it shoot. no, no offense to Michelob, man. Michelob drinkers out there, I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I'm not a beer drinker. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Scott, and uh, and everybody who who follows this channel and this podcast know that we're it's not really big on light beers here, so they 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 get it. They get it. They will they will appreciate that joke. <laughs> awesome. Hell yeah, yes. Cool. Uh, next question here. What is your favorite cocktail to make and what makes it special to you? What is it that you've been working on lately that's just kind of like, you know, is your go to right now? Uh, I got to be honest. What my favorite cocktail is, is actually not my most creative cocktail. Um, my favorite cocktail is an old fashioned. What I love to make every time whenever people ask me, what's your favorite cocktail to make? I always tell them it's an old fashioned and it's um so um the back when I first left. started yeah like, uh, <laughs> back when I first started bartending at Carinos, that was when I first started my bartending career eleven years ago. Thank you, Kathy Buckley, for having faith in me when I just was cleaning up and was like, Okay, thank you. <laughs> um you trusted a server who didn't know much to be a bartender. Yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. Um, That's a good story. Yeah. That could be a movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> um, I, I just, uh, yeah, when I first started there, I was doing old fashions the old way, you know, crushing your cherries and your oranges together with bitters and stuff like that and really not making them with any passion or anything like that. And then, um, 
I went out and got my mixology certification. And one night I was literally at a speakeasy in San Antonio called Bar 1919. And that bar was so beautiful, man. Like it is whiskey selection galore. And I was really happy about that. And I was just really enthralled by everything and just like, wow, man, this is so nice. I love this place. It, it is so amazing. And then finally, um, I got to see their menu. And in their menu, under their old fashioned, it says, you can judge our bartender by their old fashioned. Ooh, I and, like that. Yeah. And <laughs> since that day, I, I literally started taking my old fashions just really seriously and looking at new ways, new innovations. Um, I've made twists on them. I've made uh, an homage to Elvis Presley through an old fashioned. Oh. Um, banana bacon nice. bitters involved with that. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, it, it was a it was a good time, but um, yeah, old fashions, man. They're they're tried and true classic that you you just like you just love, man. And yeah, but a cocktail that I've been drinking a lot more lately, though. Uh, last words. Last words. I haven't heard of that one. It's uh gin, maraschino liqueur, green chartreuse, and lime juice. Hmm. Very gotta- strong. Very strong. <laughs> you gotta I send me the recipe to that shit, then, dude. I will, man. It is honestly one of my favorite drinks to, to have and to make um, as well, just because um, fell in love with them in New York, man. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned tribute to uh, Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm. Um, just real quick, it just occurred to me because, uh, like, for example. Which what was the last one? Because I own like well, I I own one bottle, and then my buddy came with another one. The the Jack Daniels Frank Sinatra. Have you ever oh, messed around? Man. Have you ever messed around with anything like that? Um, we have actually a Gatsby's like a Remus Gatsby's uh whiskey in our bar right now that I oh. really would love to mix with. <laughs> um, but for the most part, whenever it's a higher end bottle. I don't try to like, like, mess around with it as much, just because it's like I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, that's a good costing bottle. Uh, if someone asks me to make them a drink with that, I'll make them a drink with that. But until someone does, I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna put that down on my tab for something. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel um, like when uh, like how you mentioned higher end bottles. It's kind of like almost like slightly tainting them, you know what I mean? Because they're they're they, pricey uh, for a reason, right? Yeah. Uh, have you ever? So you know that Matthew Lillard has um, his own whiskey company now, right? I um, I think so. Yeah, he based it on uh, like a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons stuff, which is pretty badass, by the way. I so think it's that awesome, you mentioned but, um, it. I I might have a bottle. I think I'm not sure, but anyway, go on. The cool part about what he was saying, his uh, lead distiller, uh, I forgot her name. She's She's been, like, raising through a lot of his, like, she's been making a lot of his bottles and everything like that, and she's amazing. Um, something she said really resonated with me because of the fact that it made me view, like, oh, yeah, there's no wrong way to enjoy any type of liquor. Um, she said uh, when... Well, when the lady asked, oh, so do you want an ice in your glass or what do you want, Mr. Lillard? And he was like, uh, well, I learned from my lead distiller that whatever way you want to enjoy liquor is good as long as you're just enjoying our liquor. Like, How so, true is that, though? Yeah. So, like, in my head now, whenever someone's like, oh, give me um, a glass of azul, like the $55 shot and make it into a margarita. I'm like, yeah, sure. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's your taste buds let's do it (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's cool though like there's no holding back there's no like there's no rules with it you just kind of like at request yeah Yeah, whatever the person wants is what they're gonna pay for so it's not like i'm gonna be like looking down on them because they want like a a gentleman jack old-fashioned or something like that and i'm like yeah "Eh, okay i'll make it oh it's gonna be a little bit on the like tartar side just because of the fact that you use the Lincoln method with the Jack Daniels but I mean I got you I tried it by the way several times I actually like it myself so the single barrel <laughs> the gentleman oh gentleman nice yeah yeah same 
it's actually really nice. It really is. Um, but that that that's freaking cool how you just kind of like again that I request and there's no rules, no holding back. So um what, what bar is it that you worked at again right now? Gatsby's. Gatsby's. You guys need to go check that out. Oh, yeah. Uh moving on to the next one. How do you balance innovation with respecting traditional cocktail recipes and techniques? How you were mentioning the old fashioned and you've been respecting it, you've been uh, mastering it. What what steps do you take to kind of like, you know, keep it at its core? Um, well, for the most part, you always want to make sure that when you're making an innovation or a twist on a co cocktail, you keep the what the soul, what I believe is the soul of the cocktail. So like when I made an innovate, a twist on the old fashioned, which is the banana bacon one and everything like that, mm -hmm. I did the syrup with banana the no i did it with berry sorry sorry i did like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with bananas and stuff like that um you could have kept going i would have believed you <laughs> it was so good uh, so i did a berry syrup with a banana and bacon infused bitters which tasted so good by the way it I, sounds amazing i got i uh, actually got 151 this weekend at gatsby so i'm gonna be starting to do fermenting our own bitters this week actually so i'm really excited Ooh. about that as well um so i did that with our oh, what was the peanut butter whiskey i forgot which one it was i think it was screwball yeah so all that together really delicious and basically i kept it to being the same the three the three ingredients that you know your your bitters simple syrup I mean, your bitters, your sugar, and your whiskey. Boom. That okay. Your bourbon, I mean. That is your old-fashioned. And I literally keep it to that because that is literally how it should be. Okay. I mean, even my Cosmopolitans, I had to take a step back and, like, reassess how I did them because of the fact that I wanted to make sure that they were made the same way that they were made when they were made in the Rainbow Room by um, David DeGroff. So I okay. took a step back, looked through the recipe, looked for his recipe, boom. And even at Gatsby's, they follow the David DeGroff recipe as well, which is an amazing thing. Um, going, Being able to go back and see the pure recipe as opposed to like old fashions, I got to be honest, there's so many like recipes out there that people say, oh, this is the real old fashioned. This is the, how you make a real old fashioned. This, there's, there's too many innovations, but at least with the Cosmopolitan, we have someone who has a claim to have created it still alive and putting out books that like, oh, hey, this is how you make my cocktail. All right, guys, like no one else. No, 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 no. This is dude, how you make that's, it. Like, that's legendary, dude. Heck yeah, man. So like, to be able to like, I don't know, like still be able to pay homage to a beautiful drink while keeping its essence in there as well is is the way I balance my like respect to it in a way. Because I don't want to put something out there where I'm claiming, oh yeah, this is um a last word twist and it's nothing even close to it. So like okay. my bad last word is basically everything close to a last word except for the maraschino liqueur which i substitute for our in-house liqueur and the only reason i do that is because the maraschino liqueur has cherry notes whereas our in-house liqueur has apple and grape notes so i'm still t keeping the same like oh it's a fruit and like sweet taste to it mm -hmm. but i'm just changing up the notes to it so it's still a last word but not really the last word with a little bit of your twists i guess yeah. you could say cool 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 i like that um that, that that's awesome like it's very it's very precise yeah the, again trying to keep it uh at, at traditional how it's supposed to be and i love how you used uh uh what was it you said that the soul of the cocktail yeah that's fucking deep dude Dude. that's poetry <laughs> I, I mean honestly like you're if you want to make a class like the classics and everything like that they have their 
they're standing on their own already. There's there's every bar in the world that can make them already. So to say like, oh, I'm gonna make a twist on something that's been been around before I was even born. Like, come on, dude, you you're you're messing with with soul right there. That's 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 that's, that's the beauty of it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get you. But again, that's deep, bro. That's deep. Uh, and we're gonna dive even deeper with these questions now. The next one is um, you trying to walk us through developing a new cocktail and the concepts to a final presentation. How you were saying that you tweak around with like syrups, bitters, this and that. Uh, and I know that uh, you also make your own stuff, your own syrup stuff yeah. like that, which is awesome. So uh, walk us through what is it, how the uh, inspiration, because like how you mentioned when inspiration hits, you kind of have to stop and write it down. Yeah, I know um, that's part of it, but what does what what else what other steps do you take? I mean, so for me, there is a <laughs> there's a Start method to my lap. madness. I, I swear to God, I, there's a method <laughs> to my madness. So it starts with sticky notes on my wall right here. <laughs> it goes to my little small black book. <laughs> And then mighty, from there, it pants, goes, do you have do you have pins with like the yarns going across? <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe there's only <laughs> one thing going across. That's it. And <laughs> something going across connecting two things. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so then it goes to this book. This oh, book man. is the one I take to work. This is also the one that I carry around most often. It has a lot of my bad and good ideas. Um, when it gets into this book is when I start practicing it at work. So most of the time, whenever I come up with a cocktail or an innovation on cocktail or something like that, it's always because uh, either I got to see a new liqueur or a new method in doing something. So I will always write out the method at least a few times and think of every part of it so not only the cocktail like oh like how it's going to look in this final product I i'm thinking about okay i want to know the glass i'm putting in i'm putting what garnish i'm putting on there if i'm going to have a foam layer do i want a foam layer do i want ice in there what kind of ice i want in there uh what taste notes do i want do i want this to be more censored or do i want it to be more gin forward do i want it to be more vodka forward what am I trying to push more to be the center of this cocktail that is not the center in every other cocktail that I have already pushed out? Um, and then as well as like just even smaller things like freaking, OK, if I'm sliding it like this, will it does this look better or does this look better? And it's it's literally just notes on every aspect of a cocktail that is just ridiculous. That's, that's some, some stuff that I shouldn't insane. even be thinking about. Like, <laughs> oh, if we had white napkins instead of black napkins, I could probably do this and like leave a little mark <laughs> on the napkin. And I'm like, for for presentation, I, yeah, like I like stuff I Damn, should not be like. Dude. Okay, this is way too much. Like thinking about this, <laughs> but like at the same time, I'm just like, dang, dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, honestly, it's it's literally just a lot of writing and thinking about stuff. And then on top of that, like towards the end of it all is literally putting it in front of my other the other bartenders I work with. So that way they see it and they're like, OK, let me let me try it out. Let me see how it tastes, because honestly, extra input is always good, man. Honestly, um, okay. helps out. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. That's yeah. see, that's that's insane, dude. And then how you pulled up your little black book, it's like what? It looks like a Bible already. So technically that's kind of is like your little Bible. Yeah, this one this one's kind of like already trashed and like I have a good amount of pages <laughs> left. But yeah, this is like my third one. Um oh, there's multiple. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um usually when I go through them. Um, I don't like to save them just because they're not my final ideas. So okay. if I do end up keeping that, it will be end up like any idea I keep from this that I want to make sure I keep is in the bigger black book. So that oh, okay. this is not something I'm like 
oh my god francis glee looking for you know so there's just many like your notes and your blueprints and stuff like that yeah like stuff that okay. is literally like oh, okay like it, it like i think i wrote on it once uh like on a one page what if it was blue and that's it like <laughs> So like it's it's not even something that like oh this is something that and then it's gonna and be then you pull necessary. out the yarn. <laughs> oh my gosh! There we go. It connects. But no, no, and then um, I have also like a bunch of papers on my wall, of, like um, days of events I have, menus that I've actually like helped make and stuff like that, and then like just a bunch of stuff. That is crazy. And that's the process, guys, for, yeah. you know, being a mixologist. You go insane. And, and <laughs> just if, if you're not a little bit, like, insane, I mean, shit. <laughs> and the, the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing and then uh, expecting, different, expecting results. different results. Is that, like part of your process too or like are you trying no, to like break no, through that or is <laughs> no no because oh see with us there's no insanity because of the fact we're not doing the same thing over and over again we're that's true we change that's it true. up and <laughs> and then expect a different result <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> but we're working through that we are working through changes okay <laughs> oh my god all right uh next question how do you approach uh pairing cocktail cocktails with food and what factors do you consider when creating complementary flavor profiles being that you work at a bar that i i assume also serves food no. so there's got to be stuff that people are like eating and you're like oh you know we'll go good with that this so on and so forth so um when I'm at Rochas, yes, we do have food, but right now at Gatsby's, we still don't have a kitchen yet, which is oh. pretty bad sometimes. But <laughs> the good part is we did during Valentine's a food pairing for most of our cocktails and stuff like that as well, which is pretty awesome. So nice. we did like a tomato basil, um, like little, little tiny bite. It was delicious. It was amazing. Uh, paired that with a basil infused cocktail. It's very Ooh. delicious. Um, as far as pairing food with with cocktails go, most of my training for that only goes towards whiskeys and red red meats and stuff like that, as well as like yeah, uh, your wines and like your fishes and stuff like that and various stuff like that. But for the most part, I love working with desserts when it comes to pairing with food, just because of the fact it's fucking fun. Yeah. So like, yeah. I like making. Um, actually, Isis actually created a tiramisu cocktail this for this Valentine's Day that was very really delicious. Oh. She paired it with lady fingers, so that way you can dip it into the little tiramisu cocktail and eat it like it was tiramisu. Oh, was, was that just exclusive for Valentine's Day or is that yeah, unfortunately? Stay? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe oh, well. if, you, if you're really nice to her, she can probably whip it out because I'm not sure if she, there's still some lady fingers there. But if there is, she, she'll she probably whip it out. Okay. Um, Noted. But for the most part, we've done like. Oh, dude, I'm trying to think of those. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuck on the words for these meats and cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see i don't know the names of these meats and cheeses but i know what they taste like and they taste delicious wang, wang wangler <laughs> you started mentioning like willy wonka freaking ingredients <laughs> well i'm just saying we did okay so out of candy by k you're amazing i love you because we use your product almost every time so during Valentine's Day, we're actually pairing cotton candy with one of our cocktails because it was a little bit. So the cocktail itself that. was a little tart. So that way, if you wanted to, you can add the little cotton candy ball on top into your cocktail and it'll sweeten it up. Or you can eat the cotton candy on the side while you sip on your cocktail because of a little sweetness and tart. I, I saw that. I think you might have put it up on your Instagram. Yep. And it looks it looks sick. 
it was, was fun making. It was just really hard. <laughs> we didn't have a proper stand for the cotton candy. So we were I was making one out of these little clips we had and our bamboo skewers. So that way okay. it looked like the cocktail, like the cotton candy was floating right above the cocktail. Oh, so it wasn't actually in there then? Not yet. No, no, no. Okay. So basically uh, you would have the cotton candy like floating above the cocktail and then the person would be like, okay, either take little bits of it need it or just drop it all in there. Um, it makes sense because, you know, when you put liquid in, in uh, cotton candy, it dissolves. So yeah, that does make sense. Um, if I, what would you, what was the name of it? Did you have a name for that one? Uh, I think we called it the love cloud actually. Yeah. The love cloud. Okay. Not exact. I would. I would have put. I would have thrown in a little bit of like a. Oh, you. Would, you know, it'd be also pretty cool if you bring that back and make it a little bit more Halloweeny and 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 put a little bit of killer clowns into it. That'd be freaking cool. Ooh, okay. There's an idea yeah, right there. Okay. <clears throat> oh, what were they called? The little cotton candy, like, cocoon, cotton candy cocoon. Cotton candy cocoons. Yes, sir. Ooh. That's that a booze and chill like idea exclusive right there. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as other stuff, like I did um a sugar cookie like cocktail where they had a sugar cookie pairing on the side, where the cocktail itself was like um like a I don't want to say like it, an almond like coffee drink, very okay. delicious. Um, so they were able to dip the sugar cookie. That one I did at Lolita's, which is really nice. I love that they gave me that freedom there as well um but yeah uh and then oh with the <laughs> the banana bacon bittered uh old-fashioned i did a caramelized banana wrapped with a bacon around it okay so that way you had a good like little bite as well as with the cocktail you know Are we talking and then on in... top of that a little bit of the bacon grease you know dripping into there just helped out the flavoring just a little bit more you know because Bacon, well, are bacon. we are we talking like regular bacon or honey yeah. bacon? Uh, it was regular bacon. Regular bacon. Ma okay. Okay. Yeah. Regular bacon. I, no, no, think, no. Uh, uh, anything special, but uh, still, still good. I like bacon. Always like bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? <laughs> I don't know. There's someone <laughs> out there, dude. <laughs> some weirdo out there who's like, I'm some why guy, the hell you know? would you do? <laughs> oh, what's For, up with that guy? Fucking Peter. <laughs> <laughs> no no offense to Peta, but y'all need to no, chill y'all need to chill though <laughs> but uh how you mentioned uh the comparing and complementing foods um and you brought up wines because like as far as like because i i do uh i do beers and then i do foods and i do compare them as far as contrast complementing and stuff like that um, and then you said that you do mostly the whiskeys. What recommendation do you have for me? Because I'm a big whiskey guy. What what recommendation do you, would you say? Like, uh, what do I have right now? Have you ever heard of uh, Old Forester whiskey? Dude, yes, of course I have. I actually use that a lot for my old fashions. There you go. What would you compliment that with the food? What would you compliment? Ooh, do or recommend some, me. I mean, do some awesome kebabs with uh, some red peppers on there. And Ooh. purple onions. Okay. And then get get make the the meat good like a good bit of it. You want you want to get like a good chunk of like when you bite into it, you want to make sure that you're getting a good chunk of meat, not just like little thin strips or something like that. You want to make sure it's a little chunky, you know, on your kebabs. Okay. Yeah. And now, then um, um and, uh, are we are we talking just like straight on the rocks or in a cocktail? Ooh. I was thinking just on the rocks, but I mean, if you do a good cocktail, okay. I would suggest. I mean, I'll do either or. Maybe, maybe do a Manhattan, dude. Manhattan with a little bit Manhattan. of sweet vermouth and bitters in there with your old forester. That okay. and the kebabs. That sounds like a delicious freaking meal right there, dude. Okay. Noted. I'm going to have to try that because uh, I still got like a good amount of the old forester. So. I'm probably going to use it up for that. Hell yeah, man. Trust me. You, you enjoy that. And then you can even use a little bit of the old forester when you're, you know, with the the meat. You know, just give it a little Ooh. dabble in there. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Hells yeah, that's for sure. I'm trying that. And uh, I guess uh, the last question to finish off this uh, pod- podcast interview. Uh, discuss your knowledge of various spirits, liquors, mixers, and how you use them to create balanced and flavorful cocktails. I mean, you I'm pretty you pretty much have been saying it, but like maybe just kind of like narrow it down in a smaller yeah. package. Um, for the most part, I I like to fo- follow um the perfect sour ratio for all my drinks. Um, okay. that helps me out when it comes to people who are like liking their balanced drinks who aren't like. And also helps me gauge the norm because of the fact that like this is the normal sweet and sour mix. If anybody wants more sour, more sweet, I just go up or down from that. Um, if anybody cares, it is one ounce your lemon or lime juice, half ounce of your simple syrup. That is the perfect sour mix for all your cocktails, martinis, margaritas, everything like that. Boom. That's your mix right there. It's the perfect. You want to add a little bit more? Just double up your stuff. You're good. It helps you in such a way that no matter what you're mixing alongside your your juice already, you already know, okay, I'm balanced out on my sweet and sour. I just need a flavor and my spirit. And I'm good. So stuff like that is just... It, it, it helps out so much because of the fact that like once you have that knowledge of like okay like even oh man dude there's so much knowledge you actually do need <laughs> uh, so this is like awesome this is awesome you're yeah, really like dropping your, a lot of gold nuggets man your, your sweet and sour mix is just one thing but also your knowledge of your your bottles is just super important man i cannot gauge this enough um stand behind your bar read your bottles read the notes like on those bottles like oh this has notes of rhubarb this has notes of of citrus this has notes of of elderflower stuff like that like read those bottles look up like if you get a new bottle into your bar look it up and just be like okay this tastes like that this goes good with that okay cool we have some of that so that way when push comes to shove and people are like in you're in the weeds and stuff like that and people are like oh i want a specialty cocktail that's made with that particular liquor or something like that it's like all right yeah no problem just turn around and be like it's, don't even bash like bash and like what, what's the word <laughs> i can't think of the freaking phrase don't even I get worry about it yeah. i get what yeah, you're yeah, saying like you can literally <laughs> just like turn around and be like yeah right away boom, boom knock it out you're done um yeah but like literally knowledge every type of knowledge man any type of knowledge um there's um i'm vibe amazing company does a lot of uh magazines and stuff like that um absolute and kalua also put out a newsletter almost every other week um who else uh the usbg um united states bartending group you guys are amazing. They are uh, outstanding. The South Laredo one uh, is run by a girl named Ruby from Republica Nacional. She's amazing. Great job, Ruby. She does Didn't a lot. Know of we had team. one of those here, man. Yeah, she's the one who did the that helped me out with the competition. Actually, she's the one that. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. San Antonio's. I mean, Austin's is pretty awesome because they did the espresso martini competition that I was in. And then Houston's is even more amazing because they get people from like wild Turkey to go to theirs and like shove out a bunch of like stuff. And it's it's amazing. Um, I went to their last one for wild Turkey and that's where actually I picked up this one, my Bible phone because yeah, wild Turkey. (laughs) Um, it is a fun thing to do when you get to go and immerse yourself around people who are in the same industry as well as have more knowledge than you in the industry like um oh man, what's his name i think it's brandon no it's brian <laughs> i too am bad at names <laughs> yeah hold on, i'm trying to remember his name it is 
Oh, you were saying how surrounding yourself with the with the crowd that is into yeah, the same so, thing as you are. Yeah, that's a basically good, that's a good point. It it helps. It helps so much. Like um Cheese from Needle. Amazing guy. You sit down with him for at least an hour or something like that, talk about cocktails. The dude is a waterfall of knowledge, man. Like literally, <laughs> like man, dude. It, it is so amazing to like like when I went to New York for that month and everything like that to be immersed and literally just not have to like you're thinking about cocktails like every day you go to work you're thinking about cocktails in a way like i have to make this cocktail for this person when you immerse yourself and go to places where like you can just look up knowledge and stuff like that yeah it becomes more like okay i'm doing this because i want to because i want to like do this for myself not because someone's like telling me like Oh, give me a cocktail with this. Like, no, like you're you're learning for yourself. You're doing this for yourself. So it becomes more of a personal thing. Like it, it becomes more like sensitive to you because of the fact that you're able to be like, I I went out, got all this knowledge. I went out, searched for more knowledge. I went out and understood everything about this. So that way, when I come back, I'm not just making that for them. I'm making it because of the fact that it is also personal to me. It is also something I want to push out. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, I, I love what I do, man. I honestly like it, it's like uh, I actually had um, <laughs> ISIS asked me um, why bartending. And honestly, it it came down to my grandma, dude. Honestly, she um she used to love day oh, drinking. Oh, we're going to get into the origin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, she used to love day drinking a lot. And like literally like now whenever I make a cocktail, it, it is a cool thing because um, my grandma's not with me anymore. It is a tragic thing. But when someone likes a cocktail, there is something that a customer said to me. He's like, yeah, take pride in that because if they like it, it's like, think about it. They're smiling because she's probably smiling from a talk because she got a little bit of that too. Dude, yeah, that's it, awesome. Yeah, so like now whenever I'm making a new cocktail or something like that, it just it just makes me smile a little bit more when people like it because I'm just like, yeah, I know my granny liked it too. <laughs> that is awesome. Really like paying tribute to your, your grandma, really. Oh, yeah. To bring the same joy that your grandma felt when she drank, that same uh, joy that she felt while she was drinking, pass it on to you, and you're just kind of like, you're just kind of spreading her love, really. Hell, yeah. That's awesome, dude. dude. Honestly, it's, it's it's something fun, man. Especially, <laughs> especially like I, I I have um a photo that I love to show off every now and then. It's her holding up a beer, <laughs> and like, dude, I'll say this awesome. till the day I die. I was like, man, my granny was always happy whenever she had a drink in her hand. <laughs> That's awesome, man. If you can send me that pic so we can put it up on here, dude, I awesome. will send you that pic. Actually, hell yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it'll be like somewhere over here you guys see it um, yeah definitely <laughs> but yeah man it's, I, it's I, definitely I, worth showing and then um yeah and then it just it just makes me feel a little bit better dude honestly just every cocktail i put out little by little that is awesome um this entire podcast has been freaking it's awesome again you dude, threw some honestly, gold dude. you're doing some gold nuggets uh you're pretty much like how you mentioned the word waterfall is pretty much what this entire thing was. You're really uh, throwing a much more respectful perspective into the mixologist because it's like you mentioned stuff that I would have never even thought of that nobody would have ever thought of. So dude, dude, congratulations, so man. Dude, honestly, it, it means a lot. Um, uh, Thank you for having me, man. Uh, I truly appreciate this, man. Uh, quick shout out once again. Uh, Rise, oh, Rochas, Gatsby's. We're going to be opening up Rise, hopefully, at the beginning of March. Gatsby's is already open Tuesday through Saturday, 4 to 2 a.m. Stop by. And then Rocha's, amazing food, an amazing place. I'm there every Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 2. 11 to 3. Sweet. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I will leave a link to the two videos. Uh, one was the first time uh, Angelo uh, joined. And the second was going to be the cocktail contest that he mentioned that you guys needed to get check out. It was the very first one here in Laredo, Texas. 
So that's freaking awesome. He not only is he an awesome mixologist, but he also brought something a little different, a little bit of a, of a of his grandma's love, I guess we could say how we discuss into this contest. So that's awesome. I'll leave the links to that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show them where they can find you. Uh, I've got I've got your Facebook here. Yep. You can look them up. This is your personal one, I believe it is. Yes, it is. It's your uh, personal one. My Instagram is probably the better one to look through everything. Yeah, like that's where he Dang. that's where he like captures his crazy stuff. I'm a, I'm gonna play this first one here. This one's that's awesome. That's Rochas. That's how this it's is fun just in a, the morning. Just a little sample. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys want to uh, follow him, his uh, and his adventures and his crazy bottle flipping. And yeah, just you know, hit him up. See, maybe you can uh visit him up, get a drink from him. You will not regret it, guys. You will not regret it. It's some and good if you stuff. You have any private events or something, you need a bartender. I do those too. There you go. Still doing that. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> but that's a pretty that pretty much covers this uh this podcast here. Heck and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was it was a very interesting one. It's a very it's a very, I don't even know the word, but it was, it was very touching. There's also very touching moments in this. That's yeah, awesome. Appreciate that, man. And um, like, like I said, follow him up on Facebook, Instagram, see all his, all his crazy stunts, all his crazy cocktail mixes, and make sure to also follow all the booze and chill socials. And and if you want to get this, if you want to get this podcast or audio podcast early, make sure to become a Patreon member on Patreon slash booze and not only will you get expl uh, blah, blah, not, not explicit exclusive content, you also be supporting the channel as well. And but you know how this works, guys. And that's pretty much it for that. We will see you guys in the next one, and uh, or the next video, or the next live, or the next podcast. Peace out, guys.